today's video, we're going to have a look at Abenomics. We're also going to be looking at what the Fed has said. And from there, we're going to be moving on to the RBA and of course, Tesla and Apple on stock splits. Hello and welcome to another HCY Securities Market Update. My name is Alistair Schultz and I'm going to be a host through today's trading journey. The first thing I'm looking at today is about Abenomics and I'm wondering whether it's going to continue. Of course, Prime Minister Abe is stepping down and the method that he has employed through not only his being fiscal policy but also monetary policy known as Abenomics has been pushing through for some time. So now we're looking to see if it is actually going to continue. Now, what goes into the background behind Arbonomics? Well, the first thing is we look at purchasing lots of government debt. The other aspect is that we try and target inflation, specifically around 2% is what we see in Japan. Now, these, this all probably sounds a little bit familiar because it's not just Japan who's done it. We've seen the ECB do it. We've seen the US do it. And the US is now, as of last week, doing something very, very similar indeed. And of course, there are a number of other central banks that are trying to do the same sort of policy, all with the goal of increasing prices or inflation. Now, so far, that hasn't been all that successful. It's had its limited successes. There are elements of it that have worked and there has been some inflation rise in some areas, but the majority of central banks and of course their economies have struggled to get anything more than just a few different sectors. Clearly, the entire economy is not getting it. So what is actually going to happen when we find out who the successor is from Prime Minister Abe? Well, the first thing I consider is it doesn't really matter. The chances of Abenomics disappearing or going anywhere else is probably not likely. They're in the middle of a pandemic. They've had another number of other issues to deal with inflation that they're still trying to combat and have got from pre-COVID-19. So therefore, not until at least next year towards the end when we do finally have an election, are we potentially going to see any real changes happening towards the current monetary policy strategy that is employed by Japan? Now, thinking about it from Japan's perspective, we need to also look at the US perspective. As of last week, when we heard from Fed Chair Powell, which I've already spoken about before, and then letting inflation run hot and targeting unemployment to try and raise those figures up with more employed persons, that we've heard from Fed Richard Clarita. Now, He's noted that some of the models that are being used to sort of forecast where inflation might go for the US need to be considered with a lot of skepticism. Now, if a Fed member or an FOMC voting member has said something along those lines, like we've just seen now, it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence that the US or the Federal Reserve Bank is gonna be capable of changing what they do compared to what's happened with the US and the ECB, who have both had lackluster results when it comes to rising those prices or in turn, inflation. So really, how much different can, of a situation can we expect to come out of the US? Personally, I don't think we're gonna see much difference. And I think that we are gonna see long-term interest rates quite low for an extensive period of time beyond what we already currently think. Sometime into 2022 would be my first guess. Now, moving on from that, we have got stock splits that happened yesterday. Naturally, as you would imagine, prices have risen. Now that shouldn't be the case though. When it comes to stock splits, it doesn't add any more value. It's no different to if I was to offer you for the same $5 note, five $1 coins or five, or five single $1 notes. Now, regardless of that, you are no better off from before. On one instance, you had a $5 note, now you've just got five single dollars. So which one's the better case to be? The answer is none of them. They're really just the same figure. So why is it that a stock split right now with Tesla and with Apple has resulted in such a promising growth piece. Now, what we've seen from Tesla so far is it's up 80% since August 11 when they announced the stock split. For the year, it's 495%, which is phenomenal. Now, we've also seen from Apple 35% since just July 31, all because of the announcement of their stock split. And then for the entire year, it's 76. So I would be a little bit hesitant to invest in things like this, particularly given the idea behind what's happened with Hertz and a couple of other companies along the way where we've seen them, or like Kodak, where we've seen them run up and have a very much a speculator's delight occur. It's gone up, come back down rather quickly. And so right now, I'm not sure where this is gonna go, but I'm certainly gonna be keeping a very close eye on what might happen in the future, especially considering once people sort of start to realize valuations from stock splits don't increase. Now, moving on to the RBA. My expectations for the RBA today are a little bit different. I'm expecting the rate to be held so I don't think that's any different from many of the other analysts out there. 
The things I'm going to be having a look for are household debt and consumer spending. I want the RBA to address it. We have a very busy week for data this week when it comes to the Australian economy, not to mention what we're seeing from the rest of the world. Most of it figuring around PMIs and trade balance. Now, of course, with Australia, it's going to have all this data coming out at almost simultaneously. Throughout this week, we've got several releases each day. Tomorrow, it's going to be GDP. So, of course, with all of these coming in, it's going to mix the results a little bit and it might confuse what we might see. So we need to take extra care to know what we're seeing and reading. Now, my focus is really going to be looking at how they're going to handle the Victorian situation, especially considering those GDP results tomorrow. So I don't expect, just again to reiterate, I don't expect that we are going to see a rate change of any kind. I do expect to see household spending and of course household debt and consumer spending all in the report for the minutes later today in their statement. So keep an eye on that. It'll be at about 2.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Now for the news ahead, there is a lot going on today. So please check your economic calendars and make sure you're not going to be adversely affected by some of the news coming out. Of course, most of that is coming out of the EU, the US and Australia. Now for the news ahead of today that I focused on, I'm looking at the RBA cash rate, but of course, the rate statement is going to be more important to me. I don't think they're going to change the cash rate like I was saying before. However, I do think there will be something in the rate statement for us to have an idea about the Victorian situation and this three geared economy we're finding ourselves in right now. Outside of that, commodity prices are going to be important to have a look at to see how well we're being supported. And of course, from there, we have German employment change figures and the entire Eurozone unemployment rate coming out. So that's definitely going to be something we want to keep our eyes on and see what the ECB's action might be later down the track. Later in the session, we also have US ISM manufacturing. So please keep an eye on that if you are trading in the US session tonight. Now, if there's anything from today's video you'd like to get in contact with me about, please feel free to shoot me an email at talktoal at acy.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this video so you can get more great content from me and ACY Securities in the future. Have a great trading day ahead.